Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Now we've been doing a lot of work with fractions. We've also done a lot of work with division. And now I think it's the perfect time to bring those two concepts together as fractions and divisions actually go hand in hand. Pretty cool, huh? To show you what I mean, let's take a look at Isabella and her animal shelter. She has three pounds of dog food to give to five dogs. Well, how much food will each dog get? We can write this as a division problem. Three divided by five. But this could also be written as a fraction. The dividend, three, would be the numerator. And the divisor, five, will be the denominator. <laughs> That's cool. Fractions are actually a type of division problem. The numerator is the dividend. The denominator is the divisor. And the line is the division symbol. It's like a fraction is a division problem in disguise. All right, there we go. Three over five or three fifths. By writing it as a fraction, we've actually already solved the problem. But let's take a deeper look. Here we have three whole pounds of dog food, and each whole pound has been divided into five parts. Five parts because there are five dogs. Each dog will get one fifth of each whole, making a total of three fifths of a pound of dog food for each dog. As we write the division problem as a fraction, we already get to the answer of three fifths. Great work! What do you say we try some larger numbers? Chen, Jenny, Lucas, Will, and Latifa are decorating a banner that is 32 feet long. If they each work on an equal amount of the banner, how much of the banner will each person decorate? All right, let's start by creating the division statement. There are five people that are splitting up 32 feet, and this means that we'll be taking 32 and dividing it by five. Now that we have the division statement written, we can change it to a fraction. All right, 32 over five. Oh, but that's an improper fraction, so let's simplify. But before we change the fraction into a mixed number, let's estimate the answer. 32 fifths is between which two whole numbers? Well, we know that when we count by fives, the number always ends in zero or five. And 30 is a number that is less than 32, and 35 is a number that is bigger than 32. So here we have 30 divided by five equals six. And if we take 35 and divide it by five, then we'd get seven. So excellent. Now we know that our mixed number should be between six and seven. Now back to our problem at hand. There are six groups of five and 30. So we have six holes and two fifths left. Each person will decorate six and two fifths feet of the banner. Whew, I got a good start on it. I can't wait to see how the banner turns out. Fantastic work, friends. Keep it up. You know, all this talk about the relationship between division and fractions has got me thinking. We could also take a look at the relationship between multiplication and fractions. We can start by looking at multiplication and divisions of whole numbers. Now we know that if we have a multiplication problem, we can also write it as a division problem. If, for example, two multiplied by three equals six, but this can also be written as six divided by three equals two. But we can think about it as groups. Two groups of three makes a total of six, uh, or a total of six divided into groups of three makes two groups. Now let's take a peek at some fractions. Uh, fractions, as we already said, are another way to write a division expression. Uh, for instance, we have the problem uh, three-fourths multiplied by four. Well, here is a single three-fourths. Now when we multiply it by four, we can actually create three holes. See, we have in this column four-fourths, and then another four-fourths, and another one which equals three holes. And just like with the example above, we can take the product, in this case three, and divide it by one of the factors, four, and get the answer as the other factor, three-fourths. Cool, huh? Hey, what do you say we team up with Eric and solve some mighty problems together? Using the equations below, fill in the boxes with the correct number. All right, we can help Eric with this. For the first equation, we have something multiplied by three equals two. 
And if we are multiplying and getting a smaller number, then we must be multiplying by a fraction. So let's rewrite the multiplication problem as a division problem. Now we can take the product, 2, and divide it by the factor that we already know. 2 divided by 3 equals what? Well, now that we have a division expression, we can write that as a fraction. 2 over 3. 2 thirds multiplied by 3 is equal to 2. Fantastic! Now let's do the same thing with the second equation. What times 5 is equal to 4? Uh-huh. Well, let's write this as a division problem again. 4 divided by 5 is equal to what? Well, we can write the division as a fraction. 4 over 5. And there we go. 4 fifths multiplied by 5 is equal to 4. Cool. Excellent work. Wow. There are so many mighty relationships with numbers in math. Today, we looked at how division is related to fractions. And you were able to divide numbers by writing them as fractions. We also saw the relationship between multiplication, division, and fractions. Keep it up, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.